Hey, good morning and welcome to worship here at Rossville Presbyterian Church. My name is Mike Lyle and I am blessed to be the pastor here at RPC in Rossville, Indiana. For those of you who are new and maybe joining us for the first time, we just want to extend a special welcome to each of you. We're so glad that you're here and it is our deep hope and desire that this worship service would be a blessing to you in your life. As we enter into worship, just got a couple of announcements to get on your hearts and minds today. First, today is the third Sunday of Advent, Joy Sunday. And as we move closer to Christmas, we hope that this worship service would move you deeper in your relationship with Jesus Christ this Christmas season. Today also at 11 o'clock this morning, we are going to have a Zoom congregational meeting. We've been announcing this for a few weeks in email and in worship as we are setting our hearts and minds for all that God has to offer in the year 2021. So for those of you who are members who have RSVP'd, we encourage you to check your, in, your inbox for that Zoom invite as we vote on the 2021 budget. Next Sunday is a really special Sunday. Normally, we have an in-person children's nativity play. But obviously, because of COVID, we can't do that. So our kids have gotten pretty creative this year. And so I won't let the cat out of the bag, but just to let you know, the kids are still doing a nativity play. And it is our deep hope that you would find it meaningful, hilarious, wonderful, endearing, deepening of your relationship with Jesus and your faith. And then also, on Thursday, December 24th, not long from now, at 7 p.m., we are having a drive-in Christmas Eve service. It's a lot different than we normally do. We can't have the intimate candlelight service that we do in the sanctuary, but it is our hope and it is our prayer that this service would be equally, if not more so, meaningful and fun for you and for the whole family. So we encourage you to come out, come a little before 7 o'clock, get your parking spot, and enjoy this spectacular Christmas Eve service that we have planned for you. So without further ado, I invite you to take a moment to breathe and to prepare your hearts to worship God. In the Gospel of Luke, it says, As the people were filling with, filled with expectation and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah, John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Remembering that through our baptism we have be, been grafted into the family of God, we light our third candle, the candle of joy, to celebrate God's great kindness to us in this Advent season. Let us pray. Holy Lord, we walk another day closer to Christmas, a day where we celebrate the fact that your love took physical form. You come so that we might truly know what joy is. Guide us, Lord, to share your joy with all, what, all we meet. In Christ we pray, amen. Light the Advent candle three, think of heavenly harmony, angels singing peace on earth at the blessed Savior's birth. Candle, candle burning bright, shining in the cold winter's night.
Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before Thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee, center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea, chanting bird and flowering fountain, call us to rejoice in Thee. Mortals join in happy chorus with the morning stars began. Love divine is reigning o'er us, joining in a heaven's plan. Ever singing, marching onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. So all of us come here this morning with baggage. We're human. We're broken. We're not perfect. We make mistakes. But the great news is that's okay. This is not a showcase for saints. The church is a hospital for sinners. And so with no guilt, with no shame, let us come and confess our sins before God and one another this morning. Would you join me in the prayer of confession? Prince of Peace, who was and is and is still to come, hear our confession. Shuttered behind walls of buildings, hearts, and tribes, we have only created space for those that agree with us. You came to break down barriers, to return your people to strength and unity. But we have quick, quickly rebuilt them. Lord of grace, have mercy on our fear-founded reactionary lives. And hear us now as we continue with you in silence. All of us have our own understanding of who God is and what that means for our lives. Sometimes our understanding of God is textured by our relationship with our parents. Other times it's influenced by how we experienced church in good ways and in bad ways. But this morning Jesus cuts through all of our baggage, through all of the things that are between us and him and he tells us who he is, a God who is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, who doesn't wait for us to be good enough or perfect or awesome enough for him, who came before we were even born and saved us from our sins. Sisters and brothers in Christ, hear and believe the best news in the world. In Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and set free. Thanks be to God. Amen. So as we enter now into a time of centeredness, where we listen to what God has to say to us in Scripture, we take this lighter and we light this candle. And this candle is one that we light on Christmas Eve. We call it the Christ candle. 
And every time we light it, it's a remembrance for us that Jesus has not only come into the world 2,000 years ago, but he's actually here right now in whatever room you are inhabiting in this video, in this worship service. And he's going to warm us and enlighten our lives through the truth of his word. So let's invite him to speak to us now through the song, Speak, O Lord. Speak, O oh Lord, as we come to you to receive the food of your holy word. Take your truth, plant it deep in us, shape and fashion us in your likeness. That the light of Christ might be seen today in our acts of love and our deeds of faith. Speak, O oh Lord, and fulfill in us all your purposes for your So the scripture passage that comes to us this morning is from a prophet, a prophet that doesn't get a lot of airtime normally. His name is Micah, and it's in the fifth chapter, starting with the second verse. So hear these words. But you, Bethlehem of Ephrathah, who are one of the little clans of Judah, from you shall come forth for me one who is to rule in Israel, whose origin is from of old, from ancient days. Therefore he shall give them up until the time when she who is in labor has brought forth. Then the rest of his kindred shall return to the people of Israel." And he shall stand and feed his flock in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God. And he shall live secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth, and he shall be the one of peace. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. So no matter how much we like to think otherwise, if we're honest most of the time, we have a preference, a positive bias for big things. If we didn't prefer big things, Texas wouldn't exist. The excursion would have never been dreamt of by Ford. The latest iPhone release wouldn't have come with a mini and a large version. For us, bigger is better. When I was in college studying business management, we read a survey that studied all of the heights of CEOs in North American companies. And you know what the average height of a CEO was in America at that time? Six foot, one inch. We equate big with strength, with leadership, with stability, with safety, with protection, with success. And when we don't have big things in our life, it's not only disappointing, but it can even feel as though life itself is smaller, less meaningful, less valuable even. And, you know, that's one of the difficult things that a lot of us have struggled with right now. Not just with COVID, but everything that has happened lately has shrunk and affected our life. 
Our sphere of travel has gotten a whole lot smaller. We have smaller bank accounts. For some of us, less opportunities for vacations with family and friends. For others of us, the economy has shrunk. Our traditions have been reduced. And for us, this feels not only like a burden, it feels very much like the opposite of a blessing. And then we hear these words, these words of God through a prophet called Micah. Micah himself was small. We consider him one of a whole group of prophets that we ourselves call minor prophets. He wasn't as big of a deal or as prolific as, say, Isaiah or Jeremiah. So we have reduced him and his words and their value to us. And we've called them less significant. And yet, out of that still, small voice, a prophecy was spoken to us. It was spoken directly to the little people, to the little lives, to the tiny churches and communities that are often hit harder by situations like COVID and seasons of difficulty. He spoke to a little hamlet called Bethlehem, which was a farming community, named Bethlehem because in Hebrew, it's translated as the house of bread. It was a minor town in a sea of an agricultural industry that had a little bit of fame way back when, but now it was just another blip on a flyover state that nobody much cared for compared to bigger cities. But Micah says to all of this, to this little clan, this little community, that one would come out of them to rule the peoples of God. One who would redeem and save God's people from themselves And return Israel, not just to its former glory, but to a new glory of strength and unity and peace. And as much as we think bigger is better, for God, he sees things a whole lot differently. Just this past week, a few days ago, I companioned with a family as they grieve and celebrated and laid to rest a very small person. Jean was 102 years old and probably was no more than 80 80 pounds soaking wet. She never gave a million dollars to a university and put her name in stone on a building. She never grew six foot one inches and became the CEO of a major corporation. She never got elected to high office or changed the laws of our land. She never had a massive house or dripped with jewels and fame. And yet, Jean was a giant, a leader of faith in her community and not always was one to grab a microphone and grab everyone's attention. She led a different way with an uncommon, gentle, Christ-like love that changed our lives and drew us deeper into who Jesus is. Hers was not a big or a grand life. It didn't have to be. Because sometimes the best is actually not the biggest. God tells us in Scripture that he knows the plans that he has for us. Notice, God doesn't say, I've got big plans for you. But he still has plans for you to prosper and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. So maybe you're feeling the effects of that diminishment in your life right now. Maybe your family isn't as close as it used to be. Maybe your finances aren't as strong as they used to be. Maybe your future isn't as certain 
as it used to be. Maybe the momentum of your personal success that you thought you were on a trajectory of has slowed or even felt like it's gone backwards. Hear the words of a minor prophet, a message not only of encouragement, but of peace and actually even joy this Christmas season. God has a preference, a positive bias even, a shining for flipping the script on what is small and therefore deemed by us to be less meaningful, less valuable, less worthy of love, less successful, less interesting. Because it was a tiny, insignificant town that became forever known as the birthplace of the salvation of the world. It was a young and naive couple that, was, that were no, on nobody's radar, not even married yet and marked with the scandal of an unplanned, unwed pregnancy that would be the immediate family of God himself. It was in the screeching howls of a tiny child born on a cold, dark night in someone's shed because nobody cared enough to make room, even for a teenage pregnant mom. And that child grew to change the world and had brought you to this place right now. Size actually does matter. But God himself doesn't dispute that. Nevertheless, to him, Size never determines value. In the eyes of God, all things are created equal and are on a plan of goodness. And he's the one who controls everything. He's the one who gives us life today. He's the one who is guiding us to deeper wholeness through his son, Jesus Christ. And he's the one who is making all things new, raises the sun in the morning and sets it in the evening. And he is the only one who gives meaning and value to everything that we see and touch and experience. And he looks out over your life, over all the smallness and diminishment that has crept in like a bad dream And he says this Christmas season, I still have good plans for you. Big and small, stretch limos and Toyota Corollas, history books and unmarked graves, abled and disabled, all need redemption and all have new life in Jesus. All are cherished and given meaning and significance through his mercy. So come, receive the heart of God this Advent season. A heart that sees smallness as the birthplace of greatness. Amen. child is this who lay to rest on Mary's lap is sleeping who angels greet with anthems sweet while shepherds watch our keeping this this is Christ the King whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. So bring him incense, gold, and myrrh, come peasant king to own him. The King of kings salvation brings 
let loving hearts enthrone him. Raise, raise the song on high. The virgin sings her lullaby. Joy, joy, for Christ is born, the babe, the son of Mary. This, this is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the son of Mary. Nail spears shall bring him through the cross he bore for me, for you. Hail, hail the word made flesh, the babe, the son of Mary. This morning, as we bring all of who we are to God and invite him in to speak to us, and as he has through music and words and silence and prayer, we have an opportunity to speak back, not just in prayer, but with the fullness of who we are in our lives. And one of the great ways that we get to do so, to participate in God's goodness, is through the giving of tithes and offerings online. And the first tithe that we bring to God is a tithe of the soul. And so today we tithe to God a note of gratitude for all medical professionals and personnel. Just this week, we started to hit the new wave of COVID outbreak that has come since the Thanksgiving holiday season. And not only in our community, but in communities all throughout this country, hospital beds are overflowing. Staff is overworked and tired. And more people are getting sick. And so today, as we tithe to God, a portion of the bounty is given to us in obedience to Scripture and gratitude for who He is by giving online or a check in the mail. Let us pray and thank God for all medical personnel and staff and professionals who are working way too hard, triple time right now, to keep us safe. Let us pray. Lord, we give to you these tithes and offerings out of thanks and gratitude for all that you have done in our lives, for blessing us with these incredible doctors and nurses, professionals in all fields of medicine and personnel in all rungs of leadership who work high and low to keep us safe, to save lives, and we thank you. We love them all the same, and we lift them to you as we lift to you these tokens of gratitude. And we say, Lord, thank you. Keep them safe. Surround and protect them. God, there are so many people right now that are really struggling. And as agents who are empowered to be your beacons of hope and grace, we ask that you would take and receive these gifts from our souls and you would touch someone's life through them. Extend your grace and your healing and your message of hope that isn't just good religious words, but it is true and life-changing. Use us, Lord, as your faith community, that all we do and say and impact and invest in would be not for our glory or for our kingdom or even for our benefit, but for the benefit of others for the salvation of your world, that our humble service would be a gift to others directly from you. So we lift to you all of these tithes and offerings, and we recommit our lives to you in them with the words that you taught us to pray, saying together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we speak now the prayers that are on our hearts today. We have an opportunity not only as a family of faith that normally meets here in person, but we consider you as a part of our church family. And we want to make sure that every voice is heard, every prayer can be lifted before God and one another today. So if you've got a prayer request, we encourage you to send it to the email listed below. Those will be held in confidence. And one of the things that we are vigilant with is protecting people's privacy and security. So all the prayer requests that you offer, just list if you would like them held confidentially or shared in this worship video. And if so, just so you know, we lift just the first name of people who have asked for prayer requests so that we can honor and care for one another as we pray and support one another in solidarity and in spirituality. Also, there is a lot going on in our church, even though we are not meeting in person. Like I said, we have got an Advent Nativity play coming up. We have got a fantastic Christmas Eve service in person this coming December 24th, not that far away. And so if you would like to subscribe to to subscribe, to receive our weekly emails and news, and also our devotions that go out on Tuesday and Thursday mornings via email. Encourage you, we encourage you to go to our website, which is listed below. And at the bottom of the home page, you'll see an area where you can subscribe to receive those emails. So we encourage you to go to our website to subscribe. And it is our deep hope that you feel right at home at Rossville Presbyterian Church. So would you join me in a word of prayer? Lord, we lift to you these prayers knowing that you don't just hear words, but you intercede on our behalf. And you move and respond when we seek you with our hearts and our lives. Today we pray for all who have contracted the coronavirus. For those living in fear and anxiety due to this horrible outbreak and all of the repercussions that it ensues. We pray for our country, for all leaders and rungs of government and industry, for the entire medical community, and for all who are struggling with mental, social, and emotional repercussions due to COVID. We also lift to you those who are known particularly to our hearts this morning. For Joseph, as he recovers from his motorcycle accident, for Susan, for Robin with amputation and Susie with liver cancer, for George with colon cancer and Jerry with aorta issues, for Matthew with incarceration and Tracy with cancer, for Mark with cancer, for Butch with abdominal surgery, for Ashton and his back fracture and Noreen with cancer, for all school personnel and students and those affected by wildfires and the aftermath of hurricanes, for Tony who is on a respirator with COVID and Josh with a sudden onset of juvenile diabetes, and we lift to the families of Dick Rausch, of Ward Frey, of Jean Wolfe, for our sister church, the Rossville Church of the, Brethren, of the Brethren, with an outbreak of COVID, for Mulberry Health with COVID, for Milner Nursing Home, and for our church family. We lift to you all of these prayers now, Lord, with the words that you taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer, saying together, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now go, my friends. May the grace and mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each of you, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Stay safe. We'll see you next week. Take care.